Syncor VG91. This is the kind of universal video generator that I use for just about everything. And um, Bob Anderson recently did a video where the capacitors in the power supply leaked and caused his to stop working and caused a bunch of uh, linear regulator ICs to go open. So I figured we would take this apart. I guess it's a big problem on these. Some of the uh, 220 microfarad power supply caps leak and eat up the circuit board and um, eat the traces up and short and carbon track. And I, I'm no, I'm no stranger to that. Working on uh, automotive engine management stuff and just about every vehicle now. It's about 2002 and older. Not all of them, but a good deal of them are suffering from the same thing. And it doesn't matter if it's Ford or Toyota. There were some bad capacitors. Even brand names like Nichicon or whatever in that era that leak and are very caustic. So let's get this open and before I use it anymore and see, see how it looks. Here's the power supply board, and these. this is the one on his that leaked and ate the board up. And this actually looks really good. Okay. I guess I can take it out and, take, and change them. It's not hard to do. They are Nichicon 105. Centigrade. Actually, it looks like that one there is starting to leak. See the crust? So I'm going to recap it. One thing is I don't leave my test equipment on when I'm not using it. I don't like turn on the bench and have all the test equipment fire up. I turn it on when I'm using it and off when I'm not using it. I guess that one was getting too hot. They had to add a little bit on to it, huh? And of course the ESR on all these capacitors checks out great. Well, I see absolutely no evidence of any of these leaking. The date code on these is 9615. 9601, 9601-9601-9615. So I see no evidence that any of those were leaking. Uh, like I said, this is the one where the it could have been, but yeah, I, I just don't see it. Um, doesn't matter. We're gonna change them. We got some Chinese ones here, some Kimets. Uh, these are from 2019. These are uh, 35 volt, right? Yeah. The ESR is probably a little bit higher on these, but what, an ohm or two? It wouldn't matter. Okay, we have five new capacitors installed. I left them standing off the board even though I didn't need to. Well, just so I could get under them and feed some solder in from the bottom, too, but... Not a lot to this, but these capacitors leak and they'll destroy it. You know, I wouldn't... If you own one of these things, I would follow Bob's lead. I would not follow the fact that these were good. Just recap it. It takes about 20 minutes. And this is about $4 worth of capacitors, big deal. I'm inspecting the rest of these and I don't see, you know, as long as the leads look shiny underneath, they're, they're not usually not leaking. Uh, I kind of like that one right there. That one's kind of classy. But yeah, interesting interesting made machine what are these RF relays is 
It's a neat piece of equipment. You can pick these up on eBay for uh, a couple hundred bucks with shipping or something like that. It's one of my favorite, one of my most commonly used things. Okay, well, it looks like it's still working. This CRT is very, very, very dead on this thing. I was using this set to test uh, seven JP4s bef before I put it away. And, um, also, this the light's working there. It's very dim. I don't know if I remember that or not. I don't see how the capacitors could have affected that, but whatever. Anyway, mine was okay, but if you have one, check yours. Just recap it. So speaking of engine control units or ECUs, and I think I mentioned this in the beginning of this video, here's a uh, ECU out of a 1994 Honda Accord. And this is suffering from leaking capacitors. And let me say this about leaking capacitors, especially in engine control units. You don't notice they're leaking until they've actually damaged the circuit board. Uh, bad, if you could take all these electrolytic capacitors out of here and throw them away and the car would still run fine. It's when they start leaking and eating the traces up on the board is when you actually notice it with the drivability of the car. So this hat, I think, was really hard to start. You'd have to extend crank it for a long period of time, and it was setting some code, code number 9 for cylinder number 1 contribution or something. I don't know. I didn't diagnose this one. But we can take a look at and see if we can fix it. So right here, I started to scrape it off. You can see right there. The damage. And so we got to get this capacitor off. And these are Nichicons dated 1994. So the ones in the Syncor were, what, a year newer? So we can look at all of these, but we probably need to take this one off. See, do they have positive and negative marked on the board? I think they do. Yeah, it appears they do. You always want to make sure. Generally, when they design these things, they'll put all the positives facing one way and all the negatives facing the other, like... See how these two, the negatives are both facing on the left side, and on these, the negatives are all on the on the uh, the top side here. So gen generally, when they design them, they they do it, they clock them all the same. So let me pull this one off, and let me pull this one off, and let's have a look. So you check the ESR. And the capacitor is definitely bad, but it's not open. So this one was complete trash. Uh, the lead pulled right out of it. But what you got to check on auto stuff is see the three little traces underneath it? You got to check those and make sure none of those are open. Here's where the 220 is. Look at this. These are just bad. ESR measured perfect on this. Same capacitors that were in Bob Anderson's uh, uh, Syncor. And yeah, when you heat it up, you get that rotten, rotten fish thing going on, overpowering. But yeah, look at that. Yes, I better check the whole thing. Well, this one here, 100 microfarad, appears to be 100% dead. That thing is gone. Let me get that out of there. I don't see leakage. This could perhaps be a problem right here. See this via? It goes through the board. Need to check and make sure we're getting continuity through this thing to the other side of the board. 
I did check all of these wires under here, all these traces, they're all good. But you got to check the vias too, because they will, it will eat them out. And they will not be happy. But yeah, this one was totally open, and when I... That's a conformal coating. When I um, desoldered it, one of the leads was broken off. So, totally, totally gone. I'm not finding any damaged solder joints or traces. I'm thinking this one here being open could have possibly caused the problem because it looks like it's some type of bypass for this little hybrid thing right here. If you follow it, it comes right to that pin. That's the only place it goes. Let's see if I can backlight it. If you can see right there, it goes only to that little hybrid module to ground or positive or something. So it connects to this pin right here, this little trace on this hybrid unit. So that being open, so that being open could have definitely been the cause of the fault. I'm not finding anything else. We're going to try this. We'll see if it fixes the drivability issue with the vehicle. If it does, I'll change these three. They're testing okay. We got to plug back into the car. We're going to start it up and see if the capacitors fixed it. So is it just a code nine or was it didn't run? Yeah. It didn't run right or what? It didn't start. It took a while to start. A couple of attempts. Okay. Let's the see what. The thing I noticed if the light, the check engine light doesn't come on, it won't start. Is it? <laughs> Kind of started. Yeah, that's what it does. So it's not working. See, the light has to stay on in order to stop. So it's not fixed. No. It's not working right. Okay, demonstrate it. Go ahead. So unless it sets the code. It won't run. Uh -huh. So my success rate on these has been about 60-40. Um, I didn't change those three. They're not leaking and the ESR checks okay on all of them. These three I did change. I cleaned it up. I checked all the solder traces. I checked all the vias. But sometimes when they leak, they damage something else. Uh, you know a solid state component. It's just not worth ch uh, Chasing it down You know, this is probably about a $40 40 or $50 ECU off of eBay Or something like that, and it's just not worth it not worth the time Okay, so this code is for the Top dead center sensor in the distributor the number one identifier for sequential you think it's worth getting a scope and probing it here and seeing if this is actually getting that? Getting there? Yeah. It wouldn't be hard to do. No. This is the signal it's not seeing right here, this TDC sensor. So I want to follow this and then check this right at the ECU. So essentially, what's happening here... is you got to crank it over enough times until it gives up and says, okay, I don't see the TDC sensor signal, so I'm just going to go into batch fire mode. And so it just gives up and goes into a default backup and starts. Okay, here's the crank sensor signal. Okay, there's the number one top dead center identifier. It is there. So we need to look inside the This car is kind of done, I think, in general. Uh, it's a pretty pricey ECU. 
I don't know if it's really worth the investment with the double start and all of that. I just think this, this whole car is plagued with bad capacitors and damage to circuitry resulting from bad capacitors. taken significant things and I discuss them as if they're significant and I believe that exploring the significance of the insignificant is in itself significant talking about the significance of the passage of time right the significance of the passage of time so when you think about it there is great significance to the passage of time I mean at what point do you just like take it and sign out you know